talk to you about Generations today. Uh, we are launching a brand new Generations trilogy, War for Cybertron. And today we're going to talk to you more about the first chapter, Siege. Which means uh, raise your hand. So who would have guessed Siege when you saw just the G and the E on our social posts? Anyone? A couple of them? Uh, yeah. There's two or three. There's two or three. All right. All right. My, my favorite was somebody wrote that it was Doge. So, <laughs> Photoshop the Doge in there somehow, but it didn't, didn't work out that way. My guess was Madge. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. So, Siege is going to go back to a really exciting point in Transformers time. So, you know, we, we sort of know all these G1 characters, right? These favorite characters. And this is going to be a chance to see them at a point in time back on their home planet. Now, you know, this war between the Autobots and Decepticons, it's been raging. And, you know, when you think about where they came from, these factions on Cybertron, the Decepticons, they were the revolutionaries. They fought, they overthrew this government, the Autobots then, you know, but then the Decepticons went a little bit too far. The Autobots had to come in, you know, and they basically had to be this counter-resistance. So, when you look at Siege, you know, you have these two factions on Cybertron battling, and, you know, when you think about what is a Siege, right? It's not this elegant, beautiful combat, oh, that's an ep epic battle plan, it's amazing, it's flawless. Siege is gritty, right? It's intense. It's one side dug in, the other side's trying to break through. You know, it's the immovable, irresistible force versus the immovable object. So, what we're really excited about is we're taking these G1 characters, and you've got bots like Hound, you've got bots like, like Chromia, you've got Owl. You know, you put these G1 characters in this new situation, and what happens to them? You know, how do they look when they're in this gritty, war torn environment? Like, what do they need with them? Um, you know, and probably, spoiler alert, it's probably going to be a lot of firepower. But before we get too far into that, I'm going to turn it over to John, and he's going to talk you through some more of the toys. So, uh, you know, it's obviously really exciting to have a chance to start a new trilogy like this. And you guys maybe have been through the previous trilogy, Prime Wars trilogy. Any fans out there? Yeah. So let's watch this footage, it kind of sets the bar a little bit as to what this new trilogy is all about, or at least the first chapter. Autobots, our last stand is upon us. Choose your weapons, load out. Siege. We need to do that with the Battlemaster. 
Masters. The Battle Masters are small transformers that convert into weapons. Each one of them comes with a fire blast effect. Now this is a little clear part that will actually work within a new system within all of the Transformers in the Warp Cybertron. A three millimeter post system that allows you to outfit the weapons, but also put those uh, fire blasts onto the characters in different spots to really bring your shelves to life in ways like you guys have never seen before. So you can see he's building lionizer there. Very cool. Lionizer. <laughs> Next up, uh, we've got Fire Drive. Fire Drive is another battle master. You guys might remember he's a companion to Hot Rod. And you can see over there, every one of these characters can weaponize and armorize your characters like never before. It was Optimus Prime, Voyager class. Next up, we've got Micromasters. Micromasters, do you, do you have any late 80s fans here? Yeah. yeah. Each one of these guys comes as a two-pack. Very exciting. Based on those original late 80s characters, they're able to join together to form a, uh, a weaponized accessory, and they're, uh, they're compatible with those fire blast effects, which is very cool. And what's even cooler, they have more articulation than ever seen before. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got Race Patrol. Uh, the Race Patrol team uh, are they're, they're based on those wonderful 80s characters with cool new um, new levels of articulation, awesome deco that really feels like a total throwback to those late 80s characters. John, that is a funky looking weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, we, we were joking, it's kind of like robot yoga a little bit. But, <laughs> but men are definitely fire blast compatible. Once you guys see these things in your hands, you can really, uh, they really come to life. It's really cool. Matt, you memorized the name of that weapon by chance? Uh, that one, not yet. No, yeah, right. We can talk about it down in the booth. It was on the spot though. It's crazy. Stay tuned. It's coming this fall. Next up. And this is actually a reveal here for San Diego Comic Con. Um, rescue Patrol. The rescue Patrol characters. Yes, thank you. Um, are able to combine together into a weapon mode, um, awesome articulation, and an actually uh, little movable accessory parts, like the little uh, fire crane. Next up, we're going to Deluxe here, John. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Right, so I think you guys have seen this one. This is in the video, but look beautiful on screen. That's right, side swipe. Oh, okay. hey, what are the originals? Yeah. This is part of the original ARC crew side swipe. His uh, vehicle mode is actually a, a new design. This is uh, our, our design team imagining what does the Cybertron mode look like. But you'll see in robot mode, the Deluxe class, Forager class, Leader class items will have a, uh, a gritty um, war kind of deco to them. So. Um, it's it's not on the vehicle mode. He's nice and crisp and clean. So that's kind of what it what it is. But um, lots of added articulation. So there isn't a the line wide gimmick here like combiners or headmasters. We're actually using all of that, and putting it back into the character instead, making them more poseable, uh, more articulated than ever before, and also all in scale with each other. Which is very very cool. So I think that's something cool. As you guys see, go through this. This is really more of a scale accurate line than we've done in a long time in Generations. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. So we'll have a lot of these products, almost all of them, down in our booth later. So, so John, I, I've got a couple questions. If you guys can talk a little bit to the wheels, if you're talking about Cybertron and all this. So clearly, everyone in the audience here has been to Cybertron before, right? <laughs> so I, uh, they must have gravity, although no one believes that they have gravity. So. Wheels. Don't they all hover and fly all the time there? No, I think you know you'll see like Hound, Hound has wheels, uh, Sideswipe has wheels. We tried to make them in some cases energon power, not like Chrome Dome. So Chrome Dome kind of has like clear energon wheels. So um, you'll see case by case some of these guys have sort of hover wheels. Others are able to transform to be hovering like Optimus Prime. So uh, we wanted to make sure that this was Cybertron mode, but also relatable to the new generation of Transformers fans out there too. Cool. Maybe they inspired humans with wheels, right? Yeah. We didn't know what wheels were. Everything was square until the Transformers came here. <laughs> awesome. Alright, this is an awesome one. Next up. Cog. So, yeah. Cog, Cog, you guys know, if you, you guys may be out there, you have Fortress Maximus is missing one of his pieces. That was Cog. Cog actually, back in the day, was a parts former. 
changes to weapons that were used all over that type of class character. Um, so we and I worked together on a new system who, uh, where we're actually using the weaponized characters. They can train, they can convert it to a vehicle, but they're also able to convert it to weapons for your entire squad. So this guy can army build them, outfit, customize your characters in really cool ways. Uh, swing by the booth, you can see an example of how you can outfit these guys we've got. It's really cool. There it is. Next up, deluxe figures. And these are some new reveals for the, for the panel. We've got Ironhide and Chromia. Ironhide uh, has a cool new Cybertronian mode that uh, takes inspiration from Cup, but it also kind of feels like where you would, you would be on Cybertron. You know, you guys might remember in that pilot episode, uh, Wheeljack kind of had a, had a distinguished kind of look. Um, we're trying to make it feel like these guys are all at home in part of that 1984 pilot episode. And next, we've got a IDW fans in the audience. Yeah. Chromie is one of, uh, one of my personal favorite uh, female Autobots, and um, nice new sculpt on this. And you can see we did the designers did an incredible job of being able to do a highly articulated figure. And she has some really cool accessories. She has these uh, little removable grenades that are able to be attached onto the three motor boards. Other things so she can go in and like booby trap building and like like you know sneak attack blow them all up, which is kind of cool. I absolutely have. I, I, I said that Netflix thing that I make that transforming sound in my office. I, I actually do that. I think Sean, you do that too, right? Absolutely. We record each other doing it too. <laughs> and last but not least, we got, uh, we actually didn't see not last, we got Optimus Prime here, Voyager class. He's uh, one of the most highly articulated G1S robot modes ever. And like all Voyager class War for Cybertron Siege characters, his weapon uh, is able to convert into a shield as well, which is really fun. Um, his Cybertron mode actually draws inspiration from like 80s sci-fi, cube-sided, you would imagine he's some kind of an equipment hauler. Um, and he's uh, he actually has the ability to kind of fold those wheels under the back so you can kind of make him go hover truck as well. So the next one I know has been uh, an awesome toy that you guys have talked a lot about over the last day. Some images on um, Ultra Magnus, but I think we have a nice review here that hopefully will answer some of the questions and get a little bit of a round of applause from you guys. So, John, I'll introduce Ultra Magnus. Yeah. Ultra Magnus really typifies what the leader class of Warp Cybertron Siege is all about. Uh, not only is it an incredible robot mode, but you're actually able to convert this guy into a truck, which I don't know if we have any 2,000 robots in disguise fans in the audience. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just G1 out there. You know, we, we respect all universes of Transformers, and I think as the trilogy starts to roll out, you're going to see more and more um, homages to the Transformers universe. We are a big, awesome community, and there's so much to draw from in this awesome, uh, awesome world that we love. Um, he's able to convert the front, you convert the front part of him into the white uh, Ultra Magnus character, and then all those armor pieces are made of pieces of his trailer, and you can uh, sort of combine them onto him, much like the original release from back in the day. Um, but unlike back in the day, this guy's more articulated than ever before, swing by the booth. He's also scale actor to the other um, Transformers, which is really, really cool, and Fire Blast can have Sweet. So what do you guys think? What was that? What was that?
Touch on students. Any studio series collectors here? Yeah. Woo. So some of these uh, have been in the booth, so uh, John just touched real quick on some of the fun we've had with really bringing this whole collection together and celebrating the entire uh, theatrical franchise under the Studio Series umbrella. Yeah, so Studio Series is exciting because you guys uh, have shown us that there's a whole new generation of fans in, that were really blown away by that original 2007 film. But prepare to be blown away again when the Bumblebee, the movie, uh, hits theaters. So we've got the first uh, First ever reveal here of the deluxe class bumblebee VW. Yeah. Love it. Cool accessories. Alright, next up on this, so on the next slide there's definitely a reveal, which is pretty awesome. So yeah. old Titan. Cool. Some cool new stuff here, including Shadow Raider. You guys may have seen it in the background. We gave him a, a nice orange uh, Lamborghini boat as well as the KSI Sentry. Um, and then uh, you might notice there we've got TF3 Ratchet, but most, uh, I guess last but not least, and also a very important drop kick. So the drop kick uh, uh, is able to convert into a licensed Huey, which is really cool. Yeah. So I think, uh, like you said, you guys all cheer for the trailer up front, which is awesome. You guys saw drop kick, uh, you know, running into to battle, and some of the latest art we revealed when we shared. Shattered Dropkick. This is a, a cool look and a lot of curiosity on some of the, the parts coming off this bot. Hopefully this answers some of those questions. It shows just a, a freaking awesome toy we have planned for this one. Cool. To round out two series, we got we have two more characters. Transformers 1 Iron Eye. It's just so much fun to play with. Uh, we're done. It's, it's just, so we saw in this one. And then also, possibly one of the best movie redecos of all time, Transformers 2 Star Trek. What do you guys think? Who's doing it? Beast Wars 2000's R.I.D. and Beast Wars G1, but uh, the stories continue. We're really excited here to give the group that came to hang with us here for an hour a first glimpse at the new series, Saber Bird. Yeah.
different characters that you haven't seen in a long time on screen. So really, really exciting. Um, and then the last thing I want to say is the designs. I've worked really closely with Sean on this show uh, to really make sure we find a modern look for these characters, but really pay homage to the G1 series. Um, that's something we've really tried to do. We found, I think we found a really great balance, a really great look and feel for this. Uh, so before I kick it over to Sean, you guys want to see an actual clip from the show? Yeah. Yeah. Another 
item though we do want to touch on uh, that was teased yesterday in our booth for those that came down is another awesome exclusive, the Studio Series Bumblebee Volume 2 Retro Pop. You got some dino cassettes there, guys, for you guys paying attention. So here we go, let's go back up real quick. Oh, there's a gold Camaro with dino cassettes, and now a gold BW with dino cassettes. So yeah, some nice homage to Gold Bug. You can complete your dino uh, combiners if you get this. What's also awesome, and in about 14 minutes from now, you'll officially be able to buy this from Entertainment Earth. So check out, there's a link there now. Go to the site, you'll see a countdown clock going down. So get your uh, get your site open in the next couple of minutes and be the first to get your hands on this awesome exclusive uh, special edition toy, the Bumpy Retro Pop uh, Highway. We're gonna round out today with our Transformers Hall of Fame. We are now in the ninth year of the Hall of Fame. Really excited, I hope you all had a chance to vote. These are the nominees, all given to us from the fans. No, we did not choose the nominees. Uh, you guys tell us who the top three are, and then you guys actually vote on them. So, all right, who had a vote in there for Black Arachnia? Anyone? Uh, any Unicorn fans? Unicorn! Yeah. Major Supreme fans? Yeah. All right, who do you think won? Unicorn! 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 Battle Trap is two toys in one, but whatever. Um, so, the winner for Best Toy of the Year 2018. Officially, yeah. Battle Trap. Nice. So, we're super excited about that. We're going to keep doing this. We have a lot of fun. Hopefully, you guys do as well. Uh, last but not least, for the Transformers Hall of Fame, we always also induct um, another great contributor to the Transformers brand. I'm going to let Michael Kelly come up here for a second and help me introduce the next inductee into. So it's uh, it's my great honor to announce this year's inductee to the Transformers Hall of Fame. Uh, it's a person I've been working with for a really long time. Uh, he is now between his efforts as our most amazing editor on IDW Comics, as well as I believe between what he has edited, written, and brought to the brand is our most prolific comic book contributor at this point. Um, but as I said, my great honor is to introduce John Barber. Yes.
Frazier, also with Transformers Marketing Team. You will be sharing some new news, yes. Partnership with our partners at Fudge Studios. 
and is a 80s arcade style game with explosive car chases and action as Bumblebee drives to save Earth. I think, I think Bumblebee is like, so yeah. excited about it. So what I do have for us today is an extremely exclusive early piece, so we're still in development, but I do have a little video that kind of showcases what this game is about. So Bumblebee's okay with it. I think we're going to play the video. Here we go. Energon is the fuel that 
that powers all Transformers. Discover the power and join the buzz. Activate, power up, and launch your Transformers Energon igniters and race into action as vehicle or bot. New Transformers Energon igniters keeps on settling. Oh, he looked like he felt bad. <laughs> So that is our Energon Igniter line. So next up, we have our DJ Bumblebee on the flip pad. Can we get your dancing shoes on? Here we go.
that feeling you had as a kid back or share with that new generation of Transformers fan and remind them of what that feeling was like. Very exciting. <laughs> so the other exclusive program we want to tap into giving an 80s flair is music, right? Music is so important to Transformers and at Target, they're going to be rolling out Bumblebee's greatest hits. So all exclusive items are going to be music themed. If you come down to our showroom, you'll see the full line that will be available right after this panel. But here in the room, we want to show you two items that we thought you might like. First, one of the best music related Transformers, my personal favorite, Soundwave. Look at the line book, awesomely 80s music themed, very, very exciting. So this is a, uh, this is based off of a popular Titans Return sound wave that's retooled with a more 80s inspired boombox mode and then also comes with the exclusive uh, Titan Master Doom Box with it as well. So very excited about this. Doom Box. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> And another item that you guys are probably pretty familiar with up at the panel here our guest. is our guest. Yeah. So Bumblebee, at the end of the panel here, that is an actual item that is for sale. It is our Bumblebee Showcase Helmet, designed from the new Bumblebee design from the movie. And you'll also all premium details. But, uh, oh, okay. but it'll also have but also have a Bluetooth connected capability. So we'll be able to connect to any smart device and do anything that you want through that Bluetooth speaker that's in his helmet. And that's why he's talking. That's how, how he's been talking. So you can do everything from elaborate San Diego Comic Con inter inter integration that's trying to keep jokes, lighthearted presentation moving along. You can do that. I don't know who else would do that. Good idea. Um, we should do that next year. Yeah, yeah. next year. And, or, or you can play music from your from from that helmet as well. So really exciting item, really premium details, the new design, but tapping into that music again with that Bluetooth capability, very cool item. And also buy now. So this is officially the first movie product from the Bumley film that is available for purchase. Most of the line will be available this fall. Uh, but Target.com it is live as of right this second. So feel free to grab get your hands on the first product from the next film, throw on your helmet um, and uh, have some fun this fall. You can be the first this Halloween. We bumble that you can wear your spiky costume with a bumblebee mask. That would just be fun. Mind blown. Mind blown. Get your helmet and your rubber boots ready. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, John. A lot of, what do you guys think about the new movie line? A lot of yeah. cool Celebration of the brand, celebration of 34 years, celebration of one of the most beloved characters, Bumblebee, and it's allowing us really the opportunity to play and bring back G, you know, G1 line, do this music inspired line, um, and some of the fan favorites. So we're excited about it. Hopefully, you guys will be throughout the fall happy hunting, happy shopping. Um, and with that, we're going to now move to something that I'm confident will also excite you guys our generations now.